Hi guys, welcome back to the Yarder server. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you a solution to a problem I ran into. And so what I've got going here are two 9400-8i LSI or Broadcom um, tri-mode HBAs. And I have two of them plugged in here. And you'll notice that there's no heartbeat. So the server is currently on and there's no heartbeat. Now if you look closer, You'll see like way back behind the heat sink, there's a flashing LED, but it's uh, flashing more rapidly than you would expect for a heartbeat LED. So a heartbeat LED typically blinks about uh, one blink per second. And that is looking like maybe it's doing like two or three blinks a second. Uh, so anyway, both of these cards are not working. So it turns out that there's a firmware problem with some of these uh, cards. So these are absolutely brand new cards. They came uh, straight out of a authentic uh, Broadcom box. And I think they were manufactured in 2017 or so. So they have a relatively older version of the firmware. And in that version of the firmware, I think there's a bug where if you have more than one of these controllers, and uh, usually I try to flash these things like seven or six cards at a time, uh, so when I started plugging all these 9400 uh, 8i cards in here, none of them would start up and they were all brand new. So I just thought like, well, it can't be that they're all defective because they're all brand new. And um, how could I get, you know, that many defects out of a brand new batch? Let's get over to the, uh, the screen. I'll show you that these cards are not even detected as PCI devices. All right. So here I'm logged into the, uh, the console screen. And let me just, so I'm just gonna run LSPCI and I'm gonna grep for LSI. And so if, uh, if there's an LSI card in there, I should be able to see it. And as you'll see, it just returned nothing. So both of these cards are not detected at all, even though there is that strange um, rapidly blinking LED there. So the only way to, to get these cards to work uh, in the state that they're in right now is to install only one card. And so I'm gonna go ahead and shut down the machine and we'll pull out one of those cards and just boot up on one card. And in that case, you'll see that it, it, it will work. Uh, and then we just need to update the firmware. I pulled out that second 9400 8i card and I just have one card and the system's powered on now. And you can see the heartbeat LED, uh, which is not behind the heatsink. Uh, it's just near the edge of uh, that card there and you can see that it's blinking uh, you know about one blink per second that's pretty normal so with the second card removed all of a sudden the heartbeat uh, comes on and you can see if I look behind the heatsink there's that other rapidly blinking LED that's still there uh, but the heartbeat now actually is working all right so let me log into the server and um, show you that now that with the card running by itself uh, it is detected and then we can go ahead and update the firmware on this. Okay, so here I am logged into the server that's running with that single 9400-8i card. And if I run LSPCI from here and grep for LSI, so there you can see that it does detect a Broadcom card. Uh, it's a SAS 3408 chipset all that information is there and you can see the uh, product code says 9400-8i. Okay, so with that card running by itself, uh, it does work normally. And the only time it has a problem is when you have more than one of those cards in the system, it for whatever reason uh, will basically shut itself off and will not even show up as a PCI device. So I need to go ahead and update the firmware on this so let me set up that command and I'll show you how to do that uh, firmware update. Okay, so first of all, let me just show you the version of the firmware that's on this card um, as it came out of the box. So I'm just running store CLI 64, uh, controller zero since there's only one controller, show no log, hit enter, and you will see the firmware version is really, really old. It's uh, 2.0.5.0 basically. Uh, I don't know if they give a date or timestamp for that firmware version, 
But anyway, it's ancient because the latest version is actually 24. And so that's version two. So it's at least um, 22 uh, major revisions behind. Okay, so here I have uh, a listing of this directory that I call P24, which is for phase 24. Uh, that's, that's how Broadcom refers to their firmwares. And in here I have uh, a variety of firmware files for the 9400-16E, 9400-16I, 9400-8E, 9400-8I, that's the one we want. And, um, and then there's two different types of firmwares. There's one that's just basically the traditional SAS and SATA um, firmwares for these cards. And these cards also support what's called tri-mode, which basically uh, allows the card to act as a virtual PCIe switch and allow you to uh, connect NVMe drives to it. I typically don't really recommend you use tri-mode because the NVMe drives will typically just perform better if they're just attached directly to the PCI bus. But anyway, Broadcom introduced this feature in this generation of uh, SAS controllers. So anyway, those are the firmware files and I also have the two ROM files. One of them, the one that ends in X64 uh, is a UEFI ROM. The one that ends in uh, underscore legacy, that's the BIOS ROM. And so I'm gonna flash both of those as well to this card. Now I typically do this uh, through a script that I kind of wrote. Uh, it's a very simple script, just you know, basically running all these uh, commands. Uh, so it's called FW update. I'm just gonna show you what the commands are in here. And so it's basically um, store CLI and I have dash C all to flash all controllers in the card, uh, download file equals, and then you give it the path to the uh, firmware file name and I, I append no log because uh, by default it just generates this log file that kind of uh, is pointless so uh, I turn that off and then so that gets the firmware done and then to do the uh, the uh, BIOS ROM so it's download BIOS file equals and then path to that ROM file so that's the underscore legacy dot ROM file and then for the EFI ROM uh, it's EFI BIOS file equals and then path to the EFI ROM. And so uh, once you run these three commands, the firmware will be fully updated. And, uh, and then I also have like a, a, a check script in here that basically checks everything is uh, working properly. And, uh, and then I have the machine play this tune that notifies me when things are done. So, so that way I can kind of let these things run and Kind of walk away and if i hear the tune I, i'll know it's uh, complete so anyway that's what i do uh with this script uh you all you need to know are these uh three commands to basically download these files into that controller so i'm going to go ahead and do that on this controller right now all right so it looks like it completed the flashing uh steps successfully and uh my check script uh, basically checks everything, records the uh, the serial numbers and stuff like that. And so I'm going to go ahead and shut this machine down now. And I'm going to do the same thing to the second card. And then we'll come back with both cards installed with a new firmware. And you'll see that they will work just fine together. So I updated both cards and I reinstalled both cards into the same server again. Just like I had it in the beginning of this video. And now you can see that both heartbeat LEDs are blinking normally. And then of course if you... Take a closer look there is still that rapidly blinking led behind the heat sink on both cards but the actual heartbeat led is now blinking which means the firmware is starting up properly so for whatever reason with that uh, p2 version of the firmware when you have more than one of these cards in the system it just knocks itself out and uh, won't even detect as a, a pci card so it's really, really strange behavior. So I've uh, logged into the server and I'm gonna run LSPCI again and grep for LSI. And you'll see that it now sees both 9400-8i controllers. And let's just run uh, store CLI uh, dash our forward slash C0 show, no log. So I'm just gonna show you the current version of the firmware, at least on the first controller here. So. Here is the firmware version. It's 24.0.0.0, right? So that is the uh, latest firmware um, at the time of this recording. And that firmware seems to allow both of these cards to now work together in the same server. All right, so anyway, if you guys have bought 
uh, any 9400-8i cards, and this might even apply to the other variants of the 9400 series cards. But if you have two, of, two or more of these cards in your server and none of them seem to be working, they're not even showing up as a PCI device, then hopefully this video will help you out. Now, of course, if you're buying your cards from my eBay store, they will already be fully updated, so uh, you don't have to worry about that problem if you're buying from my store. All right, guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this sort of content, consider subscribing to the channel. Also, if you want to support my channel, go check out my eBay store. I've got the best selection of pre-flashed IT mode HBA SAS controllers for your ZFS, Unraid, or TrueNAS builds. So go check out the link down in the video description. Thank you very much, and have a great day. Bye-bye.